Okay, so hi once again guys uh, to another Soccer Tactics video that this time is going to be based on the 9 vs 9 format. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, the roles and responsibilities of a high press. Um, so the roles and responsibilities of the different players in a high press, um, what our team shape should look like, um, and how we go about engaging, engaging in that high press defensive shape. So I've got a couple of uh, starting formations here. Obviously, there's a with the nine vs nine format. There are various um, different systems that teams can play. Um, but just for the sake of this video, I have set two teams up. One that's got sort of a back three with the sort of one stopper in the middle. Um, for the yellow team, I've sort of pushed the wing backs up. Um, not too high, not as high as the reds, but I pushed the two wing backs up to join the two central midfielders. And we've just got the one sort of lone striker, um, as it were, on the yellow, on the yellow team. For the reds, um, same with the back three. So another stopper there with the six. Um, this time we put the push the two and three almost to join up as uh, almost like attacking wide attacking players really with the nine. Um, they would have responsibilities to drop back in, um, but we don't really need to worry about that in the high press um, for what we're doing. So I'm going to use the red team as the high press team, and I'm going to use the yellow team as the build now from the back team. Okay, so let's move on to the tactics board. So that was just a JPEG, just to show you where we are. So I've set the um, I've set the yellow team up in some sort of shape as I would assume a team to um, to look if they were trying to build out from the back. Um, obviously, trying to make sure that the that that they're not playing on too many lines. So I've made sure that these are you know creating triangle shapes just because that's going to create passing lanes for each other. Um, making sure that there's not too many players on different lines. So we've got sort of three lines here. Um, even better if one of the, if the number six could perhaps push into there. So you're creating another line, um, but that's all dependent on which side that the goalkeeper decides to play the pass in the first in instance. Sometimes you will get players um, where the goalkeeper is not comfortable taking the ball. I've seen that quite a lot. Um, working with um, U11, U12 girls teams over here in the US, um, so you do see some players that just will want to take the take a, maybe just have a big kick into the middle. You see that quite a lot, just a punt into the middle, into the channels. Um, you see them playing the first pass over there. I don't really like it because I think it cancels out. Um, it cancels out a player that's uh, as a passing option. But you do see some teams do it, and also you do see some goalkeepers that can um, that can try and get that ball closer to the center circle. But at this age group, the age groups I've worked with in the nine versus nine format, a lot of times you do find you do find teams that want to build out from the back. So we're going to work from that premise uh, going forward. So yeah, that's the yellow team set up for now. Um, you don't see this very often with the nine and 10, to be honest. Um, but this is something that I think is good because it offers an extra passing option for when you do, if you can get the ball into the two or three or the six and eight, um, there should be an option there to try and try and play a pass into the nine or the ten. So having them along the similar line um, works pretty well, um, as opposed to having the nine quite quite straight and narrow like that. Um, I find that that's a lot more difficult to try and build out into those wide areas. So having that extra option there um, is better. And then obviously, depending on which side it side it can uh, depend on which side that the ball gets shifted to um, the whole team would shift over so let's have a look how the red team should set up so your nine you just sort of want hovering on the edge of the box to start um, your three and your two you kind of want doing the same thing but on either side um, you should really be on the halfway line so if you're if you're in deploying a high press you really want to make sure that every single player apart from the goalkeeper is is in their half um, to try and win that ball as high as possible um, the number eight and the number 10 which are kind of your central midfielders and your six which is your kind of auxiliary center midfielder center back kind of sat I would like her, her or him sat on the sort of like edge of the semicircle perhaps and your eight and ten just like lingering in there for now so that's kind of how we can look um, from you know setting up before a ball's been kicked, um, so we'll just quickly go over some of the um, characteristics of a high press. 
So just to reiterate, this purpose, the purpose of this video is to improve the ability of your team to successfully prevent the opposition from building out from the back by engaging in a high press defensive shape. So um, we'll pay attention to the roles and responsibilities of the following players. Um, the striker or the number nine on the red team. Um, the two and the three, which are essentially the wing backs. Traditionally in an 11 vs 11 format, they would be the outside full backs. Um, but for nine vs nine, we've used them as wing backs. Um, the eight and the 10, who in this case are the central midfielders on this team. Um, so they're going to be the first kind of couple of lines that we're going to focus on. If they don't do their job correctly, then it's difficult really to try and uh, win the ball back high and to achieve our goal. Um, so we're going to loosely go over the sort of general shape of the team um, should the ball progress sort of from, say, the defensive third into the midfield third, so into this area here. But we really want to try and make sure we win that ball in this sort of attacking third. So our attacking third, the opposition's defensive third. All right, so um, so a few characteristics of the high press. So it's high risk, high reward, um, meaning that you know you have to try and win the ball up high because the higher you win it, the closer you are to goal, the closer you are to goal, uh, the better chance you have of a goal scoring opportunity. So that is kind of the high risk, uh, the high reward, sorry. Um, the high risk is the fact that because your team is playing so high, there is an opportunity that if you don't, um, you, if you're not successful with the press, that there is an opportunity for the opposition to build out um, and potentially hit you on the counter attack, uh, especially if you're, say, your centre backs um, aren't very mobile or, um, you know, they've got a really pacey striker. Um, there's an opportunity for one or two passes to build out from the back. The opposition can get can get that ball into space, and they can run onto it and put a lot of pressure on um, on your black on your back line and the space in behind them. So it, that is the high risk part of it. Um, it's very important to hunt in packs. So um, there's no use in one or two players on the field engaging the press if there's no cover and balance. Um, as most teams who can play a bit they'll build out at the back, no problem. So just to demonstrate this just real quick, if the nine goes to press there um, and no one goes with them, so say the two and the three drop off and the nine tries and press, the ball goes in there and basically that's just all that's doing is taking that nine out of the game um, because they're going to have gaps to play, to play in there. Um, and if the two doesn't push up to the three, um, just sort of stays there, we're not really doing anything. Um, we're allowing the pass in there. The nine can get wide. Um, the ten can move over potentially, or the six can move in behind and create, you know, get into those gaps. Um, so any any team worth their salt um, will be able to sort of build out from from that from those situations. So it's very important that um, in our sort of defensive lines um, that we work together and we work uh, coherently and efficiently uh, to try and win that ball back. So um, screening passes are very important, which we're going to talk about, especially with the two and the three. We're going to talk about screening passes. Um, so that's getting into the line of the pass to prevent that pass being played. Um, obviously, players are going to move around you, so it's important to be able to scan over the shoulder and to uh, to keep in line with that, um, that passing lane. Um, concentration, discipline, anticipation will be key mental attributes needed. So... Players will need to concentrate in this phase of the game. Um, they need to be positionally disciplined. Um, they need to be to be disciplined to what the coach is trying to tell them and how they're trying to deliver. Um, and anticipating where that ball or where the pass is going to develop is a very important one as well. Because um, goalkeepers generally, you know, in this age group and at this stage, um, they kind of telegraph where the ball is going to go based on their body position. But if you have got a goalkeeper that knows what she's doing or knows what he's doing, um, then they will be able to start that ball, for example, where that where the white ball is here, start in the middle and then with the option to go either way. So it's leaving the um, the high pressing team guessing. Whereas you, if you've got your goalkeeper starting here, you know you know exactly where that ball is going. And to be honest, they're already cutting half half the field for you as it is because you know that the fact the four is going the, the ball is going to go into the four, so you can already start to set yourselves up in the press. So if that does happen, then you know uh, that's uh, that's a good a massive advantage to the, the pressing team or to our team in this uh, circumstance. 
Um, it's important for players to have good spatial awareness and constantly scanning to pinpoint where opposition players are moving to. So we alluded to that a minute ago. Um, screening passes, you need to, players need to be able to scan over their shoulder and have good spatial awareness, awareness of where the opposition are and, and awareness of where you are in relation to your teammates. And it's important for players not to lag behind and respond to the cues of the front three. So the nine is going to be the player that's going to be the main cue point. Um, so we're going to describe that next. So number nine. So the first responsibility will be attempt to anticipate which way the goalkeeper will be playing the ball. So if they are building from the back, um, which you see quite a lot in this age group, as a, not a lot of keepers have got the ability to kick that ball to anywhere near the halfway line or being able to clip it sort of into the two or into the three. Um, so in that sort of direction, clip it over. And not a lot of keepers have got the ability to do that. So a lot of times you are seeing keepers just play that short pass there. Um, before the sort of new rules about players being able to start inside the box, you did see a lot of players pushing out here, um, which I hated, to be honest, because if you see how there's no depth and no width really over here to be able to play in. So if that pass does go there, one, it takes about, it can, it, you know, it can take three or four seconds for that ball to get from the goalkeeper, even if they're passing it from here. It can take two or three seconds for that ball to get across to them if the pass isn't good. Um... By the time that's happened, you can already have the three that's closed down. You can have the 10 that's closing down the two, the five that's pushing up there. So we can already start nine pushing up to the eight. We can already start to really close uh, close that team down, um, you know, really before the ball's even got to them. So I, I used to hate um, building up from the back in those situations. So I'd always like to have my players starting here. I just think it keeps the opposition guessing. So let's, uh, for this example, assume that the pass has gone in there. So pass has gone into the four to start. Okay. So basically the first res responsibility of the nine is to um, get in between the passing, the passing line of the five and four. So they should be looking to create a curved run, which positions himself or herself in between the passing line. So... Obviously, there's an opportunity to steal the ball base and a bad touch or a pass, then your striker needs to be ready for this. But really, if that happens, and majority of the time, it will go into the four just based on the fact that most players are right-footed. So it makes sense for goalkeepers to play the pass into their right-footed centre-back rather than you know a centre-back on their left foot. If they have got a left-footed centre-back, then they might go either way. But the nine should be looking to really, in this case, maybe start about there and just curve that run in rather than running directly at the player. So the advantage to that curve run is the fact that you are always dictating the four into this half of the field. So we're just looking to cut the, cut the, cut the field in half. So you're always looking to dictate into this half of the field. So as you can see, that curve run pushes the four into this side of the field. If, for example, we ran straight at the player, so if we ran, if we ran straight like that, Obviously, there's an opportunity for them to just play that pass in there, and then you know if we've if we've waited ourselves onto that side of the field, then there's going to be an opportunity for them to play the pass in there, and then use the use the advantage of having the overloads on this side of the field. So we don't want that. So that's why we have that curve run. So let's go back to the curve run. So the curve runs happened. We'll say that's happened. So the four has taken the ball. So she was, she's or he or she's received the pass. So they're in this area here. So we've cut off that pass between the four and the five. So we're hoping that, that ball stays on this half of the field now. Very, very important that simultaneously the player on whichever side the ball has been played. So for this example, it's going to be the three. So the left-sided attacking player, the left-sided win back. You want her to get in between this passing lane here. So you want to cut that pass off there if possible. Um... So we should be blocking that pass. Once again, if there's an opportunity to win the ball early on a bad touch or a pass, then the player should be ready to anticipate this. So the opposite wide player should be looking to narrow the field along with the central midfielder. So what I mean by this is, is you can probably leave the three and the nine for now. And then we're looking to really bunch this area up playing into the half field. Um, the four and the five can maybe creep up a little bit just in case there's a, there's a ball that's coming through the channels into the ten. So we can sort of creep up a little bit. So now we're really starting to congest that area of the field 
we block that pass to there um, if the pass goes into the eight. So really we want that pass. We're looking for that pass into the eight because she's going to have her back to goal. So I fancy my chances with this being one of my stronger players. Um, I fancy my chance of winning that one-on-one -on -one battle. So that's the, really where we want the ball. We want the ball to be played into a dangerous central area with the player with the, player with the back to goal. Because if there's a poor touch, there's an opportunity for the 10 to come in and nick it. Um, there's an opportunity for the 8 to win the ball. So really, that's where we're dictating the play to go. Um, the 6 can probably get in front of the 10 here, just in case that ball does get played in. Um, any good player will potentially try and play the pass in this area here so in between the gap so potentially the six needs to be aware of that the five needs to be aware of that just in case that ball does get played through so that's kind of generally where we're looking at so the number six the number eight and the number ten so you, your players that are set up centrally will have the job of getting close to the opposition shirts generally and maybe even getting in front of the opposition just as the six has here um if the opposition has a player to um if the opposition has a player that has the ability to play a long pass into the channel, then obviously these players need to be aware of it. So um, that is pretty much it. So I, th I think that's how we set up. So the most important job, so if we just scroll back and we'll do an example of how it looks on the other side. So we'll reset into our sort of position from our building out from the back position. So if the ball goes this side, um, what you're going to see is the four, so therefore their two should probably pinch in, their ten's going to shift over, nine's going to shift over, six might be coming to this space, eight coming to this space. So same thing, you're looking for your nine to curve the run, this this time to cut off the pass to the four, forcing them that way, and this should be even better because we're hoping that these players aren't conf too confident on the left foot. Um, so a way to do this is split the field in this half so now we should be looking for the eight to shift over into there potentially the six to come into this space um the nine can carry on her run to block that pass off block the pass there the two should be looking to block that pass to the three and then hopefully the 10 can get in front of the eight and the six get close to the opposition central midfield and the number six as well so there you go so that's how we're looking to to dictate the opposition into these areas. We're hoping that they play the passes into these dangerous areas here, into these. So that's really where we're looking to get the opposition to play the ball. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, finally, we can talk just a little bit about trying to set traps. So, um, so this is a way of trying to lull the opposition into kind of a full sense of security really. So we can, overload one side um so really overload the right side um with players so perhaps the nine gets in front of the eight there the eight gets in front of that player and then two just lets the lets the play develop onto that side so we make sure that we are a lot tighter on this side so a lot tighter on the right side because that's where we don't want the ball to go because we are presuming that their number four so their right side center back is a more confident ball player than their five unless they've got a very good left left footed center back which is a lot less a lot less likely so we'll take our chances and say that we're going to try and force them onto the left onto the left side obviously if you're coaching um you know, a higher level team, so like a more elite team, you might have the ability to um, understand teams' tactical shapes and you know the players, so you can make your decisions based on that. But I'm going on the assumption um, based on sort of like the travel teams that I coach, um, generally it will be the sort of like the right sided player that's going to be the better player out of the two. So we want the goalkeeper to recognize really um, that there's an overload for them on this side of the field. So when that that ball does get played into the five, that's when we immediately shift over. So it needs to be, a, this, this is the thing with this. So we immediately need to shift over and then the nine can probably attack, attack the ball um, with a bit more, with a bit more oomph than they would with the curve run, just kind of attack the five, put them under like a pressure as quickly as we can, try and get in front of the three, try and get in front of the six, and really just try and win that ball as quickly as we can um, inside the penalty area. So that's that's an idea that you can try in a game, see if it works. Um, maybe start off in the first couple of instances where we're pressing, 
um, start off with the shape that we spoke about before. Um, and then if you feel that you're, you're, that's not succeeded, then you can try and sort of um, congest the right side of the field to try and allow them to, um, to see the opportunity to play into the left side of the field and then um, attack them with pace. But once again, going back to saying hunting in packs, this is very, very important in these situations. Um, you need to be able to ha have your defensive units working together. So your front three working together with the two midfielders really doing their jobs and marking up and getting in front of players, screening passes. All needs to happen simultaneously for it to work or else it's going to break down and any good team is going to be able to play their way out. So that's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening and watching it and checking it out. Um, please let me know if there's anything um, and leave any comments and any feedback would be great on these videos and whether you want to see more of them. Um, I will be doing some more 11 aside, or I've done mainly nine aside ones so far, but I will be looking to do some 11 aside ones. Um, obviously, that changes the dynamic slightly just based on there's a lot of different systems that um, teams can deploy. Um, but I will also be doing the reverse of this video, so um, getting teams used to building out from the back as well and what sort of positions we can adopt. Um, when teams aren't trying to um, so uh, so obviously trying to um, prevent the high press and are just sort of like maybe doing a high block for example where you know they're they're pushing up but they're not really like organized in the way that they're trying to win the ball back how do we sort of like build out and get into the right positions to be able to build out and create width and create angles for the passes and create triangle shapes so that we can build out so thank you very much and hopefully you can check out the ones in the future. Bye.